In this world, I only get one chunk. However, as the series continues, the world grows alongside it, each episode unlocking more of the world for us to explore. This is episode six, so the border is going to expand six blocks. Another day, another world border expanding. Whoa, look how far back I can go. Okay, this is starting to get kind of nuts. We are actually starting to uncover a ridiculous... Hel hello, guys. Uh, hello, what are you doing here? I'm fairly certain I can kill these guys without getting the, uh, the raid effect. If I get a bad omen, because I have villagers in my world now, I could accidentally start a raid. But I don't think either of these guys are the raid boss. I think it's safe to kill them. When did you get there though? And as I was saying, we are now uncovering a ridiculous amount of space each episode, nearing closer to things like the ocean. And while I was looking around this new space, I had yet another encounter. <gasps> chicken! That, it, that chicken's so close. Please give me some seeds, yes. Can I somehow, somehow lure this chicken into my border? Hello? Yes. Yes. We did it. We actually have a new animal in this world. Hey, buddy. Welcome. And the amazing thing about chickens is because they lay eggs, I'll be able to get more than one chicken eventually. And that means we can get thousands of chickens. Oh, you just laid an egg. All right, first egg in this world. Let's see, do we get a chicken? No. Now, something I haven't done in this world for a while is properly explore the underground. And since I acquired enchantments like Fortune and Silk Touch in the last episode, I think it's a good idea that the first thing I do today is properly search underground. But before I go mining today, I want to craft the perfect pickaxe. And by the perfect pickaxe, that just means adding efficiency five and mending. So to do that, we're going to have to combine some, some pickaxes. So let's buy a couple more diamond pickaxes to enchant. All right, and our next enchantment's gonna be efficiency four, which is what we need. So now we just need to go get the levels. Efficiency four. Okay, wow, bare minimum, but I'll take it. Let's combine these to make an efficiency five pickaxe. And then let's combine these two to make efficiency five fortune three. And then the final step of that will be to add a mending book, which I can afford to do right now. So that makes one perfect pickaxe. But we still have our silk touch pickaxe to perfect. We're gonna need to get back up to level 30. There we go, finally level 30 again. But now we can go and make our second perfect pickaxe. And now, after adding two bits of perfect equipment to our collection, it's finally time to get to work. But before I do anything, play the subscribe thing! Roughly 50% of you watching this aren't subscribed. You might watch my videos all the time and think you're subscribed, but you're actually not. So please, take a moment and check if that's you. Subscribing only takes one click and we're on our way to 5 million subscribers. Okay, but this is exciting. For the first time in this world, I get to use my fortune pickaxe. And from six iron ores, I got 15 raw iron. Plus, look how fast I'm breaking all these blocks. It's so satisfying. My main objective right now is to light up every single cave uncovered in this world so far, while also collecting as many resources as possible along the way. But finding every cave was the real challenge. Seems like we've got some more mobs hiding behind here. Oh, hello. I have to clear every single corner in this world. Uh oh. Oh boy. That's a lot of mobs. Now, I'd found a majority of the caves at this point, but you may be asking, why? Well, it's all to do with this mob farm, and it's super important for what we're going to be doing next. But right now, it's time to tunnel around every floor until I've uncovered everything. But first of all, now that I have a Silk Touch pickaxe, there's something cool I want to do. Silk Touch these amethyst clusters, because they can make some great decorative blocks. And now, starting at bedrock, it's time to start my mining mission. So I'm gonna start by making my way all the way to the border. Oh, hello, gold. All right, now that I'm all the way here at the border's edge, I think I'm just gonna mine off straight in each direction until I uncover every single 
block. And this is so much faster now that I have the efficiency five diamond pickaxe. I remember when I was digging around underground here with stone pickaxes. It was so painful. And so the mining mission began. And while I was looking for all the caves, I was also looking for <gasps> diamonds. I was just thinking, I wonder when I'm going to finally find my first diamonds today. One, two, three, four, five ores of diamond. And we got 13 diamonds. Fortune is a beautiful thing. Now, obviously diamonds aren't even the most useful resource for us right now. I would much rather get gold and iron but it still feels really good to find it. Oh, that is some more diamonds. One, two, three, four. And we only got five. Okay. I mean, profit, I guess, plus one diamond. And at some stage, my luck was just insane because I was finding diamonds one. Oh, more diamonds. After another. Oh, again? After another. <gasps> they just keep coming. And it would not stop again no way it's actually insane i may never have to dig for a diamond again after today i can't believe this i can't believe this the speed at which i'm finding these diamonds is insane i stop stop it I could almost do this no cuts. At least these diamonds I, are behind the border. I can't get them. And so with the help of my fortune pickaxe, in the span of five minutes, I managed to collect 44 more diamonds in this world. But of course it didn't end there. I continued mining and found many more resources after that. All right, and that is one level completely explored that took a long time. I initially planned to completely explore every layer like this, but I underestimated just how long that would take. So I changed up my game plan to mine only around the perimeter of the world border. That way I should still be able to find all the undiscovered caves. Whoa, what have we got here? This way it only took me five minutes to clear each level instead of 30 minutes. All right, on to the next. Diamonds. I kept on mining and managed to uncover a bunch more caves. Oh my! And after one hour of mining, I was finished checking all the deep slate levels and it was onto the stone levels where I started using my silk touch pick to collect a bunch of stone. And not long after, I went to take a brief trip to the surface when this happened. Hang on a second. Okay. Uh, I don't know if any of the things this guy has are all that helpful, but since he is here, we should make the most of him. Okay. The only real thing I see here that is useful, I guess, is pumpkin seeds. We also have buckets of tropical fish. Not all that useful, but they are cool. So sure, I'll buy one of those. Look at that. We got a little, we got a little Nemo. Oh, that's fun. I, I, I like that. And after planting my first pumpkin, I returned to mining and I flew through the rest of the stone levels. I even found a few more caves on the way. Oh, hello. Please stop shooting me. I, I don't have my sword out. Whoa, this is kind of cool. Hello. Oh, there's a creeper there too. And after close to two hours of tunneling around underground, I was finally done. And I had a lot to show for it. Here is all the loot I got from that session of mining. It may not look like much, but you just have to remember, I turned a lot of this into blocks. So for example, we have a lot more iron than it seems. Oh, and of course the big one, I got over 100 more diamonds, which is just ridiculous. And after all that mining, I had a couple pickaxes I needed to repair, especially my silk touch one. But while I sat around waiting at the mob farm, I couldn't help but feel it could be more efficient. See, the whole reason behind the last couple hours was to leave no place for mobs to spawn in this world besides the inside of this farm. But this mob farm was built at a time when I had no water, so the design is weird and inefficient. But now that I have water, I think an update for this farm is long overdue. So right now I have the fun job of tearing apart this entire mob farm so we can rebuild it more efficiently. And uh, considering I've just made it so the only place mobs can spawn in this world is in here, this could be quite dangerous. Okay. Seems like majority of the mobs are down there, so this isn't too bad. 
the battle begins. Look at all those spiders. That's something we're going to have to fix when I rebuild this farm. Oh, that's a lot of mobs down there, though. All right, just for the safety of it all, I'm going to come down here and clear out all these mobs first. Now we have literally nothing to do but just demolish this entire farm. Okay, well, that's kind of unnecessary. Let's just go sleep. This is so risky. Oh, that was so close. farm as we knew it is no more this bit i can keep because the only reason i would have to get rid of this is if i wanted to move my farm and i was considering doing that but i think i'll just i'll leave it here the only thing we have to change is everything on top now that we have water but before i go on to building any of that there's one other thing i want to do first i wanted to change up the design of this farm at the bottom here to make it safer and also to improve the collection system so pretty much i just want to add a lot more hoppers i've also changed the uh the viewing area here i think this might make it a little safer and easier to uh kill all the mobs and now it's time to build this new farm I had this new and improved version of our farm up and running in no time, but there were still a few changes I needed to make. Hmm. I feel like I was getting a lot of mobs that were falling from this second floor straight down and dying instantly, which we don't really want. This is for XP, so we want to be killing all the mobs. Also, I see this is another problem. In the previous farm, spiders were a massive problem as they would build up at the top of the farm. So I tried to fix that this time using stairs and fence gates at the edge of the drop. And that seemed to prevent the spiders from building up here but I noticed I couldn't prevent them from hiding in the corners of the farm. So I improvised and added carpet into the farm in a way that only allows spiders to spawn in the middle closer to the water and away from the walls, which seems to have worked. So now the new mob farm was complete and as far as I could tell, it was much faster. So now it's time to move on to the final project for this episode and this one I'm really excited for. I want to build an iron farm. Now I want to build it above ground and I think this corner back here might be the perfect space for it. So let's just start by clearing it out and prepping the area. And now I just need to run around and get all the materials I need to make this iron farm. The things I need for this farm are actually quite simple. I just need a lot of building blocks and a few other bits and pieces. There we are. But the more challenging things I need are villages and a name tag, both of which I've already managed to get in this world. So quite quickly, I was ready to build this farm. And this farm was designed by YouTuber Waddles. If you'd like to build it yourself, I'll leave a link in the description. Here's what I've got so far. I I've made a mess of this area right now because I'm prepping it to get a zombie in here. I mean, it's a little hard to see right now because I've got dirt everywhere, but these three parts here are where I need to put villagers and this part in the center is where I need to put a zombie. So for one, we need to make a name tag for our zombie. Creative name, I know. But the other thing is I have left no spots for a zombie to spawn in this world besides my mob farm. So I think I'm just going to dig out a little area here. Okay, now we wait. This can't take too long, surely. Uh, do you count? I wonder if I could use you. I probably can't, right? And despite the very limited amount of space for mobs to spawn in this world, finding a zombie wasn't that easy. Really? Why can't I get a zombie to spawn? <gasps> zombie! Hang on, wait there for a second. Please don't despawn. You, you are name tagged now, so that means you, you can't die. I don't know why I name tagged you already. The problem is it, it's daytime out here. So if I bring out the zombie now, it, it's going to burn in the sunlight. So maybe while I'm waiting for it to become night, I can try and move these guys into the farm. But even moving the villagers wouldn't be so straightforward. Okay, where did that one villager go? Oh, I see. That is a problem. Oh, that's a big problem. No, you can't be there. Please come up here. All right, you. This. This. 
Okay, well, these guys are fishermen now. I don't want them to be there. Oh, this is so annoying. I need to move everything out of these barrels and into these chests so I can destroy the barrels. All right, now I have to start trying to lure these guys up towards the farm. You are actually so close to where I need you to be. Please just play along. All right, at the very least, please just get in the boat. All right, this is not bad. All right, so villagers are currently jumping in beds. I wonder if these guys are close enough here to automatically connect to the beds up there. Looks like they might be. Amazing. And I had all the villagers in place with enough nighttime left to lure the zombie into the farm, which was much more straightforward. There we go. And you are trapped in there. Well, that is honestly the hardest part of this whole thing. All that was left was to build the rest of the farm. But it wasn't until after I built this first part that something truly incredible was about to happen. And now this is the first part of the farm completely done. Now we just need to build a second smaller part down here. Whoa, cat. Cat. Wait, I'm, I'm so distracted, but there's a cat. This is this is cool. I want the cat. I don't remember. Is this how you tame cats? You, you sneak up on them with fish. <gasps> Hello. <gasps> this is incredible. We've been blessed with an adorable new friend in this world, and I need your help to name them. So leave a comment down below on what I should name this cat. Cats aside, now it is time for us to build the killing area. Let's start by adding our chests and all the hoppers running into them. And now we need to start building up some walls around this thing. And why is it raining? Why does it always have to be raining? And now I guess there's just a little bit of cleaning up we have to do around here before we can get this farm started. And the one final step to get this farm started Hey, that should be all we need to do. Now, ignoring the fact I built the farm wrong and fixed it in the most difficult way possible, I now had an infinite iron farm in this tiny world, which brings some exciting new opportunities for the future. So I've let this iron farm run for a little bit now, and as you can see, it seems to be working just fine. But besides just having unlimited iron, there's one other reason this farm is so good for this world. Now with unlimited iron, I've unlocked the new way I'm going to get all my emeralds. With this trade which is honestly so overpowered it gives us a one for one ratio of iron to emeralds if i just continuously do this trade whenever it's available i'll just have no shortage of emeralds in this world and it's just great and there's one thing i've wanted to do since picking up this amethyst at the start of the video which is add it as a decorative block in this room here and that concludes today's adventure we made a lot of new friends along the way and made some important progress for this world but as much as it feels I've explored every part of this world, it's only going to continue to grow and there's still another dimension I am yet to touch. So make sure to subscribe and join the journey to see just how far we can go in this infinite world.